Hello there, and we welcome you to today's edition of the ACC Today. Nice to have you along for the ride. You know, we are 10 weeks away from the scheduled kickoff of the 2020 college football season, and today we begin the first of two parts previewing this fall season, and we're going to start with the Atlantic Division. So think about this. Can you find anyone anywhere picking a team other than Clemson to win the division this year? Outside maybe an avid Florida State or a Louisville booster, Clemson is the prohibitive favorite once again this year. They've got the best team. Tailback Travis Etienne is back, along with uh, Trevor Lawrence, the likely number one pick in next year's NFL draft and the odds-on favorite as of June of 2020 to pick up the Heisman Trophy in December. But are there any weaknesses to Clemson? You've got to look hard, don't you? You've got to look really hard. Is it a little bit of attrition at the wide receiver's position, both by graduation and by injury? Is it lethargy? Will the Tigers have the same motivation that they've had the last couple of years? Or under underestimating someone else in the division. Are we missing someone? Well, let's take a look. Clemson has dominated, as we know, uh, the ACC as well as that division over the last couple of years. They've got the most talent on that side. Uh, Florida State, Louisville, and Wake Forest have had some moments over the last couple of years. Florida State and Louisville have both had coaching changes. Louisville or uh, Wake Forest has been really consistent. But the Tigers have been a dynasty, and they're the heavy favorites again. T. Higgins was drafted by the Bengals. Justin Ross, another receiver, is going to miss this year because of surgery on his neck and spine. So the Tigers are missing a little bit on the receiving end. But it doesn't look that bad because you take a look at the other weapons Clemson has and other receivers in the court. It's not like Clemson doesn't have several other guys that could be drafted from that wide receiver spot. We've got to talk clearly about Lawrence, the most prolific quarterback in college football, certainly in the ACC, and running back Travis Etienne, who decided to come back for his senior season. Clemson's defensive line is going to be the strength on that side of the ball. Tyler Davis, Xavier Thomas, Justin Foster all are back. They're young in a way, but incredibly talented. The key game for Clemson this fall will be the trip to South Bend in November to take on Notre Dame. We talked about that last week, that the Clemson a Notre Dame game is not only big because of how good the teams are, but when it's being played uh, later in the season. A huge non-conference road game for Clemson in November, uh, that is something really interesting to watch. Is there anyone who could challenge? Uh, you know, if you're a Louisville fan, you're so excited about what Scott Satterfield is doing, and, and you're really excited about the quarterback play. And this is, this is what I would say about Louisville. If they're going to take on Clemson and try to beat Clemson, they've got to get better defensively. And the numbers show that Louisville returns nine starters on that side of the ball, so you hope that they'll be better. Last year, Louisville allowed 6.7 yards per play. That was second worst in the ACC, and the Cards gave up over 33 points a game, more than any other team in the ACC. But on offense... Louisville is going to be able to win some shootouts this year. Quarterback Mikhail Cunningham, running back Javion Hawkins, and Tutu Atwell, of the terrific wide receiver, are all, all ACC players. They had amazing 2019s. Cunningham threw for over 2,000 yards. He had 22 TDs and just five interceptions. Louisville uh, did lose its best offensive lineman, Mikhail Becton, who went to the Jets. Uh, but can they beat Clemson on the road. See, that's what we're talking about. So, like, even if Louisville uh, surpasses what it wants to do or thinks it can do, it's still going to have to go down and beat Clemson. And, and can it win a shootout at Death Valley? If, if Louisville's going to win the division, it's going to have to win that game. It's in September. Uh, that's going to be something really interesting to watch, the progression of Satterfield's program at Louisville. I would put Louisville number two in that division. Who's third? in the ACC Atlantic Division as of today. Florida State, the Willie Taggart era is over. Mike Norvell in from Memphis. A lot of talent, as we know, but this isn't anything new, right? Florida State's always had tremendous talent. But Florida State returns 10 starters on defense. And when you look at the Knolls, if they're going to contend this year, even though James Blackman is back at quarterback, there's nice personnel from a skill standpoint the offensive line a question mark but defense with nine guys back that's what you got to look at it, can anyone can anyone challenge Clemson it might be a team with a great defense and the Knowles if they can get it to go uh, to go on defense might have a shot certainly for a second 
in, in the Atlantic Division because of all those guys coming back on the defensive side of the ball. I'm picking FSU third on the Atlantic side. Who's fourth? Let's go with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. They finished seven and five last year. You know, they had the uh, tremendous start a year ago, finishing seven and one. It's going to be a different type of team. Quarterback situation change. Jamie Newman uh, transferred to Georgia. That means Sam Hartman is the front runner to win that spot. Who's after Wake Forest on that side? Going with the alma mater here, the Syracuse Orange. Last year was supposed to be such an amazing season for Syracuse, but it didn't happen. SU finishing three and five in the division and just six and six overall. Uh, unlike a lot of the other defenses on that side in the Atlantic Division, it's going to be a defensive uh, rebuild this year for the Orange defensive lineman Alton Robinson uh, and, and Kendall Coleman, the other lineman gone. Andrew Armstrong is gone. Uh, Evan Foster, Christopher Frederick, those guys that were so solid on the defensive side are gone. Uh, I think the big game for Syracuse this year will be the game at the Carrier Dome against NC State uh, in November. Uh, SU, I think, is a team that looks at the schedule, looks at, at personnel, and says a winning season, a 7-5 and five, or an 8-4, and four, would be a really good season for SU this year. Rounding things out, Boston College and NC State at the bottom. BC has a tremendous opportunity with the new coach. As we know, uh, they've got Purdue at home in September right before a really daunting stretch uh, in October. BC schedule is really difficult. NC State, I'm uh, picking last after a really rough season last year, uh, going four and eight. They did hire offensive coordinator Tim Beck and new defensive coordinator in Tony Gibson. So it's a, a year of change at NC State. You know, when you change coordinators and then lose your spring practice and your summer workouts and you're not around your people, uh, it, it can make things really difficult when the season begins. Uh, of all teams in the ACC, and there have been ch changes, right? Miami has a new offensive coordinator. Virginia Tech has a new defensive coordinator. NC State's changing on both sides of the ball, and then you take away all the spring ball and off-season stuff. can be really difficult to hit the ground running. That's what NC State's going to try to do. So let's recap it. Here's how I see it. At the top, number one, Clemson, followed by Louisville and Florida State, Wake Forest, Syracuse, BC, and NC State. That's how I see the ACC's Atlantic Division as we sit here in June, 10 weeks away from the scheduled kickoff of the 2020 season. Next week, we'll look in great detail of the Coastal Division, but we'll be talking more about it on this week's Roth Report podcast, which you can find exclusively on Apple Podcasts. Hope you subscribe and like it and listen to us each and every week on our uh, Roth Report podcast. That does it for today. Have a super week, and I'll talk with you again next week.